Okay, well, this is going to turn into another episode of Argo 8x8, or the new 8x8 Argo. Uh, whatever my new channel manager named that series. Anyway, um, it seems to be working as far as uh, numbers go. In any case, we've been trying to mount a winch to this thing since I got it. And I looked at all sorts of crazy ideas like doubler plates and reinforcers and designing it myself. And it turned out to be measuring and calculating the maths on this just got to be way too much of a pain. Uh, and the cost of having it manufactured locally during coronavirus issues and lockdowns it was just too expensive. However, getting this from overseas in the USA was going to cost me several thousand dollars by the time it got here. However, my local dealer actually came up and found one of these for a good price and got it in for me within actually a few days once I got his attention. So I'm really happy. We're going to install this. So what actually happens with this? Well, there is a bar that attaches to the subframe on the inside, namely that big U-shaped one. And it runs up and along in behind here. And then a double plate sandwich either side of the logo here. And a winch sits out here. Now that is primarily to avoid tearing these two sections apart. And ripping the Argo to pieces when you're winching it. Although I don't intend to be doing too much hardcore stuff like that. But yeah, this is going to take a couple of days. And as you can probably tell from the sun, it's getting towards the evening. There's also the matter of these bits that I need to fix at some point too, but that's unrelated to the Argo. So, um, yeah, well, let's get cracking with this. All right, so first order of duty now that we've got this tarp off is to take our bonnet off. Which way do these drop hinges go? That way. Take our bonnet off. And we'll see if this thing actually fits and is the right shape before I sign off on the payment. Well, I think I might have already done that. Anyway, we want to make sure that this is alright. Alright, took about 10 minutes of mucking around and just sort of positioning things in a different way to make sure everything worked. Um, but I did get it in position. Initially that doesn't look right. I'd expected this bar, if we can see with contrast, I'd expected the bar to sit at the join between the two, but it actually sits higher. Um, looking at the brackets, that does sort of make sense. One thing I did have to do, I put in an aftermarket bilge pump, which is essentially the same bilge pump they give you, just it came without a bracket. Now that was wedged right underneath the subframe down here, uh, where the two bolts have got to go. So I've moved that for the time being. I'm going to put the bolts in and then see how I can fit that in there. But uh, for now, I'm going to open the bolt kit down here and uh, just get it finger tight before the sun sets. All right, so I've grabbed just the bolts out of the bolt kit and I've sorted them into groupings of different bolt types and lengths. And these are the only ones I have a multiple four of. So logical deduction says I need those. Washers are probably gonna be a great idea if that smooth shaft is not going to be hard up against the threaded inserts or the captive nuts. And there aren't any more of the big washers, so I think they're the right ones. So let's finger tight some of those in. So, on review, and not being able to get these big bolts to mesh, these are actually the right ones to mount it to the subframe. I even went back and checked the zinc plated ones that I'd bought. No, all right. Sounds like my apprentice has got Velcro stuck in her hair. <laughs> okay. It's in, and it's done up firmly. I used a 13mm um, Barco spanner here. These I get in a set of three. Uh, from Barco and they're ratchet spanners um, and they've got four different sizes on each spanner. I used the 13. It was really good when I had to do this blind. I had to do it entirely by feel. A tip if you're doing this yourself, uh, up the back here the subframe on the back is identical to the front so you can practice while you're looking to get the feel of it if you need to. Anyway, that bar's on. Let's see if any of these mounting brackets are actually the right shape. Alright, this is going to be a little tricky one-handed. This is our inner bracket. There's our part number if you're looking for it. Um, that looks like it's going to mount just right. Although that wiring loom I think is probably going to need to get relocated before I put a bolt through there. Um, that looks good. Now there is another little bracket in here in the collection. Let's run down and have a look. Um, this bracket I think here might be designed to meet that in the top there. So. 
that's interesting but our sun is going down rapidly so I think we might be doing the rest of this in the morning but it's nice to know that bar fits in the right spot that makes me really happy and I've got my remote control module for my winch and everything as well so we're doing a bit of a custom winch install rather than the worn winch that they recommend I wanted something a little lighter just because I get into the water quite a bit so uh, let's get all this sorted out straighten my camera angle up and we'll probably see you guys in the morning all right I've tried uh, test assembling everything this part's still a mystery to me so uh, I'm gonna take a photo I'm gonna ask on the Argo owners international see what they think all right well it's the next morning and obviously things have progressed I printed out the manual and I found out what that little angle piece is for uh, it's designed to go in under here and screw onto the metal subframe under here as a reinforcing plate um, we had concreters show up this morning with a big hole in the front yard and they're gonna put concrete in and everything lots is happening and they're just saying goodbye to me as they drive past so let's pull this out and show you where we're at with this bit of it so um, I drilled out the nameplate that's this bit here okay um, and I've used these two holes as a center line and I did find a creative way to find the center I put this bracket on here which has a nice square 90 degree angle and that gave me my line which also lined up between these two holes so I assume they're straight I then used that as a guide to use a slight little tiny knife score up here to mark the center position for the hole on this uh, main bracket now because we live in Aussie land and not freedom land um, we used uh, a 10 mil bit instead of a 3 8 uh, to drill these two holes as the manual says to drill those either side behind this there is a wiring loom which we're going to apparently have to drill out one of the brackets and move that wire the bar is already in position behind that so when I drill this it's going to have to be care I'm going to have to be careful not to scrape up the bloody powder coating on the bar on the inside so I've had these two bolts in here positioned temporarily to keep it in position uh, so the next step the manual says is to sort out the wiring in here or and get that out of the way um, of note I did buy some heavy wire to go direct from the battery to the winch but I discovered that actually this terminal here is the positive wire naturally because it's red that's designed to run the winch so that'll be good and I'll be able to hide my solenoids in a really accessible place too Anyway, I'm not using the Argo factory worn winch. I'm using my own setup because I want some remote control options. Now, I hear running water, so I think my apprentice has turned the tap on. I'd better go investigate that. As it turns out, if we can get our contrast on our camera right, I didn't actually need to drill these bra brackets out. Uh, these are little plastic flexible clips. I was able to just pull this wiring loom out of them, which is probably good because I can put them back in when I'm done. So, that frees up that area to drill that top hole. Um, and yeah, our little angle piece that was mystery before, the self-tappers go into this bit. So, uh, yeah, let's get that happening. Right, we've got our three holes nicely centered. Everything's all square. Now it's time to put our strange reinforcer piece in. And I should have read the label. It says hood frame support bracket, so, comma, winch. As if this wouldn't be related to the winch fitting. All right, that's got to go inside on the other side. We will temporarily put it over that bolt as the manual suggests. We should temporarily put it over the bolt and then drill our self-tappers in once we've got it finger tight. Sounds sensible to me. So let's do that. All right, well, the sun's come out a bit and it's warmed up, making this a lot easier because it is kind of just uh, late winter here. So, um, I've put my impact driver in, I've tightened this nut up um, so that that uh, mount or that bracket there is nice and firm. I'm going to take some self tappers, so I'm going to shove a socket on this thing and uh, see if I can get them in there. It could be a bit of a challenge, but we'll, we'll see how we go. Alright, so the problem I've run into is the holes on this um, don't line up with the bar. The bar's not quite thick enough, so... This adapter plate, unless I take it out and re-drill it, I might be forced to leave those self-tappers out. Um, I'm positive, or I'm hypothesizing that this is probably just designed to stop 
these two lifting up when there's a bit of force on there. I think by the time there's a doubler plate in there, I don't think my winch is really going to be strong enough to do that. But uh, I will probably find some really good construction adhesive that's designed for metal on metal bonding. And uh, I'll strip that, um, I'll strip this off and uh, put that in there because I don't think that that's really going to make a lot of difference. Um, anyway, I will certainly be keeping an eye on that when I winch, if I winch. So far, I haven't needed to. So, let's get this doubler plate in. All right, now I'm not sure if they give you spares in this kit. They seem like they do, but I've dropped a nut and two washers down in the bottom here that I'm never going to get back again. Not just, no, you, you might suggest there's a whole bunch of ways I can get them out. It's just not happening. I'm not even going to try. I'll buy new ones if I have to. All right, so these two doubler plates are on. I now need to go underneath here and drill these holes through. Um, and these holes, I'd be tempted to put some silicon on once I put in there. So uh, I'll get the holes drilled, put the screws through, and then we'll go from there. Oh, while I'm working away here, our local magpies have found the turned up dirt and all the big fat worms. They're having a blast. All right, so um, I've got the bottom bolt in. I'm pretty sure the manual calls to put that in from the nut on the inside. Uh, but between the silicon and getting my rattle gun in on it, um, that actually wasn't very easy. Uh, and a lot of this stuff, I think, um, is subject to variation because the moulding is plastic moulding and it flexes in the heat. And the sun's come out and all this is expanding what, since I've drilled my holes. Not the most fun thing to be doing, but we got it in. Um, and it's also just windy enough that it's blowing my paperwork around. Um, with my MS's catching up with me, so I'm starting to get really frustrated with this. I've already had to quit for a couple of hours earlier today um, so I could get my eyesight back. So I think at this point I'm going to call it quits again for a little bit. Um, I might test fit this bracket up here and put the pins in and stuff, but I'm going to have a think about it all and then come back to it because you can probably tell from the shaky camera that I now have the shakes. I'm also getting really short-tempered with the project and that's a good sign it's time to stop. After a short break, I have the winch plate mounted and this adapter bracket it would be nice if I could bolt it straight onto this because I don't foresee myself removing this anytime. Um, not at least without undoing bolts. And uh, this pin system just seems to add a hell of a lot of unnecessary weight. And given that buoyancy is something that I'm interested in, I don't like adding a lot of weight into an already nose heavy vehicle. So we'll see how we go. Hopefully I don't drown the winch. And uh, of course the silicon in this is because the water line may potentially be at that height at some point. I've also realized that this is a plastic body, not a metal one. So I can probably use a magnet to draw those missing nuts and bolts back up, but I don't think I'll need to. Anyway, I'm going to get this mounted up here and get the pins put in. This is it for now. The most frustrating part I had was to get these pins in. I had to use a block of pine and a hammer here um, to get them through and also correct the slight twist which I think is a cutting taper from I believe what looks like a plasma or a water jet cutter they've used to do this anyway it's on it's sturdy we'll figure out the wiring later I'm tired I'm going back to bed all right one little final problem I can't open my toolbox quite as much as I used to but I guess I've got if I put a big fat magnet there I guess I can hold the lid open that way but Oh, whatever all right so after a bit of mucking around I ended up sticking the hand controller on here temporarily although I haven't worked out exactly where I'm gonna hook it up in there um, I've ordered a solenoid I can't do anything with a wireless receiver until the proper solenoid arrives so for the moment it's gonna stay like this but uh, at least at this point we get the idea of how to hook a, a winch up so I think it'll become another Argo episode when I wire the remote controller in. We might take it for a test drive then and actually test the winch controller out and do all the rest. Alrighty, well, I think this is going to call it quits and I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. No actual driving in it for now, but uh, we'll go from there.